Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video I'm going to start the series on the Chigorin defense, which is an extremely interesting way to play against the Queen's Gambit. It's offbeat, it's dangerous, it's complicated, most people don't know it, and it's going to lead to positions in which knowing theory is important, being able to calculate well is important, and not being nervous is important. So the Chigorin, the position you can see on the board, is a very interesting opening choice to add to your repertoire and it could be used as a great surprise weapon. Now, uh, after d4, d5, c4, of course, e6 and c6 are the normal moves, the QGD and the Slav. And knight c6, if you see it on the board, it's either a very good player or a very bad player. Uh, and this move makes no sense. If you try to consider the classical principles, this move is simply ugly and bad. However, it's not as simple as that. Now, why would this move be bad? Well, in queen's pawn openings, you never want to block your c pawn. And if you want to play for equality as black or for an advantage with white, then your c pawn is going to be a very important factor. For black, it's either going to be used in, in a Slav fashion to, to control the center and to reinforce d5, or in the QGD and Tarash and, and different openings, you can play c5 and break up uh, white central control. When you play knight c6, you don't have those options. Now, that means three things. Three very important things which are crucial for, for the Chigorin. Firstly, uh, d5 is going to be weak in many variations and it, it's most likely that black is going to capture on c4 to get rid of his weakness. That means that white is often going to be able to build a strong center with e4, d4. That's one thing. The second thing is d4 is weak. In normal queen's gambit declined or slav or semi-slav positions, d4 is never weak. So once black takes on c4, Unlike other openings, let's just give white a stupid move. Uh, if you take on c4, usually in normal d4 positions, the principled way to play is to expand with e4, attacking the pawn on c4 and building up a strong center using the fact that black has accepted the gambit and got his d5 pawn away from the center. When in, in the Chagorin, that simply doesn't work because queen takes d4 and that's it. Black should be winning this position. So that's the second thing. D4 is weak. The third very important thing is that pawn to e5 is an immediate threat. And e5 in many queen's pawn openings is... When black achieves it, it's considered to be a great success. And of course, with a knight on c6, that's going to be much easier to achieve. Okay, so those are the three very important things. In this introductory video, I'm going to give you the basic overview of the, of the, of the opening. I'm going to give you a basic overview of what black can do in this opening and of what white can do to fight this opening. I'm also going to be showing you some interesting traps and, and attacking ideas. And then I'm going to make a separate video on four main variations of the Chigorin. We're going to be talking about four main moves, knight c3 being the main line. Then we are going to look at knight f3, we are going to look at pawn takes pawn on d5, and we are going to look at e3. These are the four sensible responses for white, which they are all completely different. Uh, when white chooses one of them, he better know he better know the the positions which arise from from that move. And if white is not careful, there are very interesting options for black against each of these. And hopefully, after you finish watching the series, and you can find the the link to the whole playlist after it has been finished in the link below in the description below. Hopefully, you will be able to play this with both sides. I myself play d4 c4 very often and I'm used to normal stuff. When I see knight c6, I'm, I, I'm not going to say I'm upset, but I'm very close to upset. Even though I know this is an opening the engine doesn't like, that means nothing if I don't know the theory. Okay, so let's, let's start. I'm going to start with the least common move, which is pawn to e3, which could be considered fairly passive. 
for white, but it has a very simple idea. You're trying to play the normal Queen's Gambit, uh, open up your pieces, play knight f3, bishop d3, knight c3, develop, and say that d4 is no longer a weakness. Well, we are encountering a problem here. Uh, in normal positions, when, for example, there's a pawn on c6, Black isn't able to play e5. Here, Black is able to play e5. And the, the, the position immediately blows up. In, in the detailed video on this, I'm going to give you my analysis for this move, which took a week. And there are many interesting options which have never been played, or at least I'm not aware they're not in the database. So basically, after e5, again, there's pressure on this pawn. Uh, taking on d5 doesn't make much sense, so white so white takes the pawn and well what's the point if if knight takes then queen takes well the point is d4 and white center is just collapsing for the moment if you don't count the pawns black actually has more pieces out and that's one of the points of the chigorin you want to attack your knight on c6 is a great attacking piece never mind the strategic and positional consequences of blocking your c pawn if you manage to checkmate so this move d4 immediately uses the fact that black is better developed. White already has to take defensive measures, playing a3, blocking well the option for bishop b4 check, a5, grabbing space on the queen side, knight f3, putting pressure on this pawn, bishop c5 defending. Now already, again, you can see two pieces out. This is dangerous. Okay. Uh, e takes d4 is one of the main moves, or the main move. Bishop takes d4, bishop e2, white is trying to castle. Knight g7, the knight develops sensibly, both sides castle. And in this position, after knight c3, black has two options. He can take his pawn back, which is not good. Uh, bishop takes e5 is, nah, don't really want to give up your bishop like that. But the interesting option is bishop takes c3. And after b takes c3, this is a ton of fun. I mean, for the moment, black is a pawn down. Uh, but that really doesn't mean much. All of these are weak. And there could be trouble. So that's e3. e3 is, well, the least common of the four options I'm going to be covering in detailed videos. It's still interesting. And if you like being a pawn up with a ruined pawn structure, then fine. This may be the move for you. But there are other options. What I think is the most interesting option is simply taking this pawn and this exchange will give white a huge space advantage. Well, it may not be apparent now, but bear with me. Queen takes pawn forced. Of course, now, if white tries to play the normal tempo move you like to play when there's a queen on d5, knight c3, then again we have a problem because of the c6 knight, queen takes pawn. So white has to defend first, pawn to e3, and it may be hard to imagine these pawns rolling forward, but trust me, it's going to happen in a few moves. Again, black has to play energetically. If black does nothing, then there's no way to break up this center. White is just going to play next knight c3 on the next move and, and be better. So again, this move e5, which we've prepared with knight, c, uh, with knight c6. Knight c3 attacks the queen, bishop b4, pinning. Now, there are two ways to play. a3 is slightly uncommon. Uh, the idea behind a3, forcing the bishop to take, of course, because knight takes, queen is forced, is that after takes, takes, you try to play a4, bishop a3. There are ways for black to prevent this, but basically, what white is going to do, regardless of whether black manages to prevent it or not, let's say black tries to develop, well, these pawns are going to start rolling forward. And this is a huge space advantage. Now, there are ways to play this with, with the pawn on e4. There are more common ways to play this with knight e2, knight c3, knight e4, and immediately putting pressure on the position. Uh, the second option is bishop to b2. Uh, to d2 instead of a3 again forcing the trade takes it's possible to take with the bishop or with the pawn taking with the pawn is better because you get this pawn storm going again and now f3 and now all of these are going to start moving forward and if you look at the position after for example this black has to start breaking this up black has to start playing c6 very quickly or else white with his bishop pair fine this, this bishop is still bad but it could get out White with his bishop pair and his huge space advantage is going to have a very pleasant position. So 
attacking simplifies the position first of all, gets rid of Black's attacking chances. It's just no attack. You could lose later on, fine, but you're not getting mated, uh, and and gives White space, which is which is very important. Now the two knight moves, knight of three, knight c three, which are the most common moves in this position, are very interesting too. Uh, knight of three has the idea of again defending the spawn, uh, and also if what e three doesn't do, and knight of three does. They both defend the spawn, but knight of three also defends against e five. So. This, I think, is very interesting, and I've seen several Ben Feingold games in this position. He plays black and bishop g4. The idea is basically that uh, black is prepared to give up this bishop to increase the pressure on, on the pawn on d4, and that's not easy to prevent. Uh, white has two moves here, knight c3 and, and cd5. cd5 is, I would say, the principled way to play. And now black exchanges, uh, g takes, excuse me, queen takes, and what do we have in this position? Well, uh, after e3 and e5, black again plays this energetic move. Uh, it's obvious that white has the bishop pair, black has a much better pawn structure, and believe it or not, black has a much safer king. Uh, white should be better if he plays correctly. However, it's not clear where the white king is going. If you go to the king side, well, that, that seems risky. If you go to the queen side, it's already blown open. Whereas the black king could castle either way, castling queenside is a perfectly sensible move, increasing the pressure on the queen. And this is going to resemble, this may sound strange, but Nidorf positions with colors reversed, in which, in which the pawn structure is slightly different. It's not d6, e5, it's, it's e3, d4. However, the king is going to be stuck in the center for most of the game and, and good attacking chances. Uh, for black. That being said, white has the bishop pair and great central control, so that equalizes matters. And finally, the main move, knight c3, which I think Chigorin players are very happy about. This is the principled way for white to play, uh, but it also allows the idea be behind the Chigorin, you can just take this pawn, so just take d takes c4. And now, there are two ways to play. You can play d5, we will cover all of that in great detail, uh, but the best way to go about this is to play knight f3, preparing the move e4. Of course, playing e4 immediately hangs the d4 pawn, we saw that. So you can either play d5 or knight f3. Now knight f6, e4, fine, white is expanding, but, but, there are two problems. The first problem is, white still has to regain his pawn, so you still have to take on c4 to achieve material balance. The second problem is, black's pieces are going to look perfect. Why? Because black gets to pin both knights, so firstly bishop g4, again, pressure on d4, you have to neutralize that. If, if, if uh, for example, bishop e2, then bishop takes, bishop takes, queen d4. So bishop to e3 defending, and now e6, opening up your other bishop, white gets his pawn back, fine. Bishop b4, now look at these pieces. I mean, Fine, you're not controlling d5, you're not defending d5, you are unable to play c5, but your knight on c6 exerts a tremendous amount of pressure. Again, with the move bishop b4, we have a threat. If, if uh, white castles, for example, then bishop c3, bc3, knight e4, pawn up, thank you very much, I win. So again, white has to play a concession. So queen d3 and queen c2 are are the two common moves. After queen c2, everything is finally defended. Black gets to castle. And if we look at this position, well, what do we see? Black's pieces are perfectly active, very fine. White has a huge center. But there are ideas of e5. The center can be broken up. Maybe this knight moves, maybe the c pawn moves later on. So these are very, very interesting positions. So all four moves lead to different interesting positions in which both sides will have chances. Black, to be honest, doesn't have to know 
a million moves of theory. It's important to know the plans against each. I would say the most important thing is to know when to break with e5, what to do against d5 when this pawn advances, when can you take on c4, where do you put your pieces, where does your king go. Looking at, for example, Alexander Morozevich's games or Richard Rapport's games or Ben Feingold games, it's going to give you a great idea of how they win. So basically they win because their opponents don't know what to do. Let me give you a quick example of what can happen in this opening. So for example, we play the move knight c3 as white, black plays knight f6. Fine. You can take on the next turn, it doesn't really matter, it's going to transpose. e4, bishop g4, we saw this, bishop e3 defending, e6, fine. Uh, bishop takes c4, bishop to b4. And now, if this move queen d3 is played, which is playable, it's the second most common move, instead of queen c2, slightly more active, then, for example, black plays bishop h5, and this may not seem like much. Uh, white hasn't castled yet, so we don't really want to take on f3, but there's a very sneaky idea of simply taking the pawn on e4. So if white goes wrong with, for example, a3 or, or rook d1 or rook c1, so a3, for example, we take, b takes, and bishop g6, and now there, there's simply no way to defend the pawn. You could play bishop g5 or knight d2, after knight d2, this is completely winning for black, because you simply take knight e4, knight e4, and queen h4. And that's it. There's no way to defend the knight. f3 is pinned, of course, so, for example, castles, queen e4, pawn up, again, thank you very much. If, for example, bishop g5 is played to pin the knight, then again, you can just take bishop e4, bishop f6, Bishop takes queen, bishop takes queen, bishop c4, bishop c7, and white is not castling, this bishop is going to be used to gain a tempo, uh, white's pawn structure is much worse than black's. So that's one example. Let, let's see what white can do. So for example, if knight c3 is played, and d takes c4 is played, and knight f3 is played, well, we know that knight f6 is the principled move, we saw that, but what if black tries to play bishop g4 straight away, just trying to take on f3 and take on d4? Well, actually, white just wins now. Okay, here's how white wins, d5, gain a tempo on the knight. Of course, the knight now does not have the e5 square, all other squares are pretty bad, so exchanging here ef3 to get the e5 square, now just chase the knight away, bishop to f4, knight to g6, and now here's the beautiful part. You can simply take the pawn on c4, there's too much pressure on the king. If black takes this bishop, which loses straight away, then you win the game. If black doesn't take this bishop, then you're a pawn up. Oh, uh, then, oh, I'm sorry, you got your pawn and you have a beautiful position. The engine gives this as plus two and a half. So, let's say black takes the, takes the bishop. We now play bishop b5, check, c6, d6, fine, queen exchange is okay, and now you're getting mated. If if you don't play f6, you just get mated. So f6 and, and I take your rook. So these are the kind of things that could, that could happen in the Chigorin. And it's tricky for both sides. There are many traps. I'm going to be showing you a ton of traps throughout the series in the four detailed videos. Uh, I hope you like the intro video. I'm going to continue uh, with knight to f3, which I think is a very interesting option. And yeah, we are going to get deep into theory so that all Queen's Gambit players are prepared for the Chigorin. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.